This episode is brought to you by Squarespace. You guys, it's that time of the year. Summertime is coming up. Everyone is going to start traveling. We're a couple of weeks out before we head to Chicago for the Darkroom Lab Beers and Cameras Meetup. So in spirit, today I thought I'd talk a little bit about how I personally travel with my film photography gear, talk about how I protect my cameras while I'm in the airport. Also, touching on the importance of making sure your film gets hand checked so you don't pass them through those really harmful x-ray scanners. I'm gonna be covering the entire 10 yards here on this episode, so be sure to stay till the very end. So without further ado, here is how I travel with my film photography. So it's been a minute since we've made anything related to traveling, especially when it comes to how to keep your gear safe on your different photo adventures and vacations. So like I mentioned in the intro, I'm gonna be covering some of the things that I personally use to keep my gear safe and how I make traveling with film photography gear less stressful. And with that said, I'm gonna be kicking off with tip number one, use a protective bag or case when traveling with film photography gear. Now obviously film gear, because most of these cameras are older cameras can be extremely, extremely sensitive. One drop and you can knock the rangefinder out of alignment. That Minolta X700 that your grandpa had from 1980, if you drop that, the plastic is just gonna snap. Film photography gear is a lot more susceptible to damage than I feel like regular modern day cameras. And so with that said, for me, using a protective case is extremely important. Now you could go a couple of different routes. You could go with a photo bag or just like any type of camera dedicated bag uh, that has different slots, like this brevity bag that I have been using for years. I've used this to travel to the Philippines, all throughout Utah, Arizona and it's a great backpack for just like everyday purposes. But lately because I have been shooting a lot of both video as well as photo, I have to carry both the hybrid setup with my a7 III, uh, the lenses that I use for video as well as all of the gear that I am filming with for my YouTube channel. And because of this I have been using this case from Evergreen Cases which is an extremely extremely well built camera case. Now this case has a ton of different customizable options from being able to fit your a7 III to the Pentax 6-7 even. I remember taking this thing with me to a shoot and I had both my video set up and like four other film cameras. Plenty, plenty of room for different lenses, different camera bodies. This case is solid, it's rugged, it holds a ton of gear, but the best part is folks, it has wheels as well as a handle because this is carry on approved. Uh, and so you can take this thing on an airplane and it's gonna have all of your gear in one spot. If you guys wanna check this case out, man, check it out in the description below. Evergreen cases, this is honestly my new favorite case. But this leads us into tip number two, folks, and that is to make sure you carry all of your valuable gear as a carry on. Uh, the reason for this is because a lot of people will check in their bags and usually that's fine but I don't always feel comfortable checking in you know five ten thousand dollars worth of gear and having that potential of it getting lost somewhere in the airport most airlines allow you to carry a small personal item and that could be in the form of a camera bag or even like this case because it is considered carry-on approved when you carry it onto the plane you can directly keep eye on it most of the time they let you just hold it or just put it in between your legs which is always good so you're fully attentive on where you're gear is at all times, minimizing the risk of it being lost or even possibly stolen. Now just like you would protect all of your precious gear, you also want to make sure you protect your film. And this is where film storage cases come into play. Now there are a variety of different ones. You can use this little Kodak one that I have. You also have options like lead lined bags, which are great for carrying tons and tons of rolls of film, almost treating it like a Ziploc bag. But one of my personal favorites lately have been these cases, again from Evergreen cases, and they hold a ton of film and the reason why I like this is because they have mesh cutouts to be able to lug around tons and tons of film not to mention you guys these are also waterproof and you know these images on film once you lose that roll it is gone forever so you really want to make sure you take good care of it so having a case similar to this or even just this one in general can really help save your vacation from being completely lost so now that we talked about transporting your film and how to keep that safe the next thing I want to talk about is how to handle your film 
film at an airport because you do not want to pass it through an x-ray scanner. But before we jump into that, you guys, I want to give a huge thank you and shout out to our sponsor for this episode, the good folks over at Squarespace. Squarespace is your all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence and run your business. Now, as a photographer here in 2023, one of the most beneficial ways to get your name out on the market today is to have your own professional website. Squarespace offers a ton of award-winning templates that you can use to get started within minutes. You can build your own portfolio, an e-commerce shop, and one of my newest favorite features, the appointment scheduling tab. This allows your clients to see what time slots you have available without having that confusion of emailing back and forth. Directly from the appointment scheduling tab, they can book you and you guys are all set, saving you not only time, but also confusion. And in my opinion, this is a must have for any working photographer. So if you want to get started today with your own Squarespace website, head over to squarespace.com slash kingjapes and enter promo code kingjapes at checkout and you guys can receive 10% off of your first purchase of a domain or a website. Huge thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring today's episode. All right, so here is probably the biggest tip that you're gonna get from this video here, and that is to make sure when you go to TSA, you make them hand check your film. You do not want them to pass that film through the x-ray scanner. Now, there's a couple of mixed opinions on this. Some people say it doesn't really do anything. Other people, you know, are diehard believers that it's going to mess up your images. Personally, I like to, you know, keep it on the safe side. And so I always make sure I take my film out and have them hand check it. All you need to do is when you get to TSA and you're emptying your bags, you're going to pass it through the x-ray scanners. You take your film, it could even be inside of that case that we were talking about. Go up to a TSA officer and say, excuse me, can you please hand check my film? They're gonna take it from you, they're gonna do a couple of little swabs and they're not going to pass it through the x-ray scanner. If any TSA officer tells you no, you need to pass it through, ask for a different officer. I've never personally had a problem with it, but yeah, that's pretty much the gist of it. Ask them for a hand check, they're gonna swab it, they're gonna tell you it's good to go and you are successfully making sure your film doesn't go through the x-ray scanners. All right, you guys, tip number five, take your gear apart. So here's a great opportunity for you to use all of those different lens caps, uh, you know, the body caps. It was made for this reason right here. So anytime that you're traveling with film gear, especially if you are putting it in a backpack of some sort, accidents happen and if you drop your gear, let's say you drop the backpack really hard, you don't want to have the lens attached to the body and having that whole concoction just break and fall apart. So by separating your lenses and having them in their own little compartments and all of the different camera bodies in its own little bay, this ensures that you do not get any collateral damage. And if one thing breaks, the other half doesn't. Tip number seven, you guys, is going to be a little bit of a funny one, and that is to use soft cases within your protective cases. So obviously you have your backpacks, you have um, hard shell cases. Something I like to do is have these little bags and pouches for your individual lenses and bodies. Now, even though these are protective and you know within these cases there are a lot of padding, I still like to cover my gear up just in case with any type of soft material. So uh, this is a little bit ghetto. I know I, I used to do this back in the day all the time, but I would use socks and stuff my cameras in them, wrap it up, and then throw it in my camera bag. If you don't wanna use socks, they sell cases online for different lenses and pouches uh, that you could pick up for a fairly inexpensive price point. So I still use my socks till this day. I mean, it's like, it's like a double whammy, you know? Like, oh man, my gear is protected and I got extra socks. Yes. And my last tip for you guys when traveling with film photography gear is to make sure you do not bring multiples. Now, film cameras for the most part are all very similar. They're just a black box. And really what makes the difference between your images are going to be your lenses. Now, let's say you're gonna bring a Minolta X700 with a 50 millimeter lens, but you also wanna bring your Nikon F3 um, and it also has a 50 millimeter lens. That's perfectly fine because they both provide different shooting experiences, but I probably wouldn't take two of the same focal lengths for the reason of saving weight. When you're traveling, you don't wanna bring multiple of everything you want to try to keep things nice and light uh, most of the time less is more and so if you can bring one camera body with a ton of different lenses that's good too but I would try to stray away from having two cameras or two lenses or you know just two pieces of gear that offer the exact same results because you probably don't want to carry all of that while you're trying to enjoy your vacation but that folks is how I travel with my film photography gear so I hope you enjoyed this episode let me know in the comment section down below if you guys have any other travel tips not only for me as well as for the other viewers of this channel man we are all a huge community here and I just want to say I appreciate everybody who has been tuning in for the last several years uh, obviously this 
this YouTube channel is it's truly my passion. And so being able to provide help for you guys and you guys providing help for me, it has been one of the greatest feats of my entire life. So huge thank you to everyone out there for subscribing. If you aren't already, subscribe and drop a like down below. But that's going to wrap it up for me. I'll see you guys in the next one, man. As always, Minolta Gang. <laughs>